welcome to my presentation about user-defined software. I'm Florian Frank, and today I will talk about an approach for software development through showing an extract of works I've done in the past uh, during my free time also, and um, current works at the Design Technologies Department at Herzog Demero. And um, um, dealing the transition from the Western production society into a service society, I think has uh, shaped almost all areas of um, our professions. And the increase in, the, in this complexity requires a good interaction between the experts and the generalists such as the architects. And so a few years ago, I ended up my thesis with a presentation, uh, my thesis presentation with a text about um, the new role of um, creative folks in the current technology uh, evolutions. And I will quickly read through it. In general, developments in technology have not simplified things, but have created an age of sensory overload and societal need for everything to be bigger, better, and faster. The resulting haste has spread into professional and personal areas of life uh, resulting in the call for deceleration. Until we break the endless loop driven by this quest for efficiency, complexity, and optimization, and do not use our techno technological progress for the benefit of all, we will not be able to overcome this rush. The so-called human progress um, will not only prioritize a minority, but also have a detrimental effect on the majority. Um, of the life of the majority. So if the present goals are continued, the prognosis of the social and cultural evolution with its um, increasingly automated solutions of our professions will lead to a redundance of many life-fulfilling pursuits. It is precisely the task of the creative minds to create a path within these dynamics and um, to enable advancements for everyone in order to shape cultural identity and to disentangle seemingly, seamless, seamlessly spiritless developments. Sorry for that. So uh, Blickfeld 7, or Blickfeld 7, is not a company. Uh, it, it's my framework to publish free available, partly open source software projects, which I realized together with experts in the field. And translated to English, Blickfeld means uh, field of view, and the number seven is a number of principles I keep in mind when I do developing uh, my software. So the goal of these projects is to make a variety of complex technology more accessible uh, by allowing the user to explore, learn, and speed up his creativity in a very easy way. Uh, how it all started was um, with uh, working on different uh, fabrication projects during the time. So um, planning tasks um, had to be taken over by civil engineers and specialized consultants. And in order to facilitate the, the creative, creative discourse between the experts and the designer and to um, avoid undesired compromises on a solution, suitable interfaces had, uh, are required. And um, experts from the IT industry create uh, technically sophisticated solutions, but they offer little scope for a design process sometimes. Um, working on the elephant house for the Zurich Zoo was a good opportunity to discover the creation of such interfaces. And uh, this video shows a tool which I um, developed in close cooperation with the uh, civil engineering office, Walter Galmarini, in one of the planning phases. Um, in the course of the previous shown works that I've done for several um, companies, um, I realized that I had to rewrite and readapt scripts every time um, for even simple tasks. So therefore, I, it seemed necessary to prepare them, to tie them up, and make them reusable in a more generic way. And this is what came out is like free available tool set called Fab Tools, mainly for fabrication, block placement, measurements, automated layouting and it's all free available um, for Grasshopper. Um, another project called uh, Vironment. Uh, I tried to cover the development from building a machine 
uh, building the drivers, the software, until um, let, giving it to the people that really use it in, in, one, um, in one step. And uh, I tried to make this technology of uh, wire bending very accessible to students in this case. And um, the title environment uh, represents the initial idea to create reinforcement with 3D bent um, freeform elements out of um, concrete. So the development, um, uh, the developed method uh, is based on a constant feed of a metal wire which can be deflected by a hinged nozzle in uh, different directions. And by calculating the springback forces um, with the numerical control of the nozzle position, it is possible to manufacture NURBS curves by approximating arcs. Um, the method has been further developed into suitable mechanics. Um, electronic components and the necessary drivers have been programmed and a simple to use touch interface has been designed for the user. Uh, the software layer shows users only the necessary uh, informations uh, about the complex calculations running in the background and allows to detect the limitations but also the design problems at a very early stage. Um, after all, the components uh, of the project were designed, uh, uh, ordered or milled and uh, the interface could finally be tested uh, with a working prototype. Um, in the end, at the international workshop in Taiwan, a group of students tested the interface with the different uh, design ideas. So I just gave them the machine, I gave them a quick introduction. It was like basically one day they learned Rhino, Grasshopper, and how to use the machine. Uh, unfortunately, I only had one machine uh, bringing in my hand luggage uh, on the flight. Um, but yeah, it was great to um, explore their um, approach with this new technology they just confronted at the very same day. And yeah, they were able to come up with, with great things, I think. Um, uh, showed me also where to improve my, um, <coughs> my approaches, my methods. And um, uh, here is another very important project. It was also tested in, in the same um, environment. And uh, it's this project called TACO was um, developed initially during a seminar at the Experimental Robotic Lab in, in Innsbruck, at the University of Innsbruck. And together with Yuan and Yu Ting, the two um, co-developers, um, we want to provide a fun and easy access to industrial robot technology for students and newcomers. It's also free, um, free software. And by reducing the complexity of control, um, facilitates the user interaction with the robot controller and makes the technology also more accessible and more easy to use. So TACO is a, is a free extension, as I said, for Grasshopper and consists of all the necessary features of a modern offline programming uh, tool. Um, in no time, complex uh, sequences and routines for even multi-robot applications can be created, simulated, um, eventually corrected, and uh, complex calculations such as inverse kinematics, uh, collision detection, and these multi-robot applications are done in the background and the user don't have to necessarily care about all these tricky things. Yeah, and in the end, uh, the automatically generated program is loaded directly from within Grasshopper onto the robot controller and can be executed. It's as easy as this. It's like, yeah. Um, Especially with concrete 3D printing, uh, this is important to focus on a sensitive, like the sensitive uh, material process is very crucial. So you need to be really quick to adapt your robot paths and uh, immediately change to any adapting situation when the concrete is not stiff enough or um, sort of things like this. You need to be really quick and, and this showed um, how easy it was for the students to use it. We were really happy to see this. We are also happy to see um, how it uh, spread out uh, after the release um, and the concept became um, quite useful for others and uh, yeah and um, in order to enable also the full uh, full real-time applications with robot we currently work on the taco 2.0 which we presented at the rob park last year 
And uh, this is another exciting step to see that coming because it, that's a really um, complex task for people using using this. Um, it's not easy to reduce this. So to, to summarize all of these um, experience I, I gained um, working on this, trying to enable uh, stuff, um, I want to um, explain my seven principles that I, I want to share. So first of all is uh, create tools that are fun and check these as your most critical user. Um, the second one is omit unnecessary information and show it only on the right time. So this is very, very important to not distract. Um, create simple and flexible tools to encourage the creativity and uh, provide the best control uh, in the most simple way. Uh, design efficient and time-saving uh, workflows, of course, and um, limit the possibility for uh, user errors. And the seventh concept refers back to all of the, the first six. The principles justify any effort and for constantly improving the tool. So this is what makes this name, now you know. Um, in 2016, I started at the uh, design technology department at Herzog Demerol, and uh, there's probably no better place to prove these principles for creating uh, creative software tools than in this international and, and innovative uh, innovations-focused office. Um, at the DT department, we work on digital solutions for the office in the area of Rhino, Revit, uh, CAT, CNC, visualization, and VR, as Mikola has shown before in another presentation, um, to eliminate difficulties in the design process. So our part is in the middle of um, having all the architectural uh, project groups. We try to provide solutions for them or even help them out on specific tasks within the projects. But we don't do any architecture projects on our own. Um, especially here, it's important to, to connect these diverse, diverse areas and uh, for a more efficient and creati creativity enhancing workflow. Um, better in, um, so these three pictures will um, show what I mean um, very exactly, very precisely. It shows the same project uh, from the same perspective and illustrates very well the challenges of an architectural project uh, has to go through. The transitions between these phases have to happen as um, uncompromisingly as, as possible, of course. And um, the following transitions between plans, project management and visualizations are derived from a central 3D model. Uh, so when it comes to BIM, our department always tries to be one step ahead uh, with the use of new interfaces. And therefore, the, the network of all elements um, to a satisfactory semantic building model has to be partially scripted by Parivit. Like we, we, we have to constantly create new workflows for all specific tasks we have to create. Um, uh, also new opportunities like uh, we respond always with, with great interest and examine them for the practicability in the, in the project teams. We literally break them into their components, analyze them, and, and assemble them according to our wishes, so what we think uh, would be an application for it. So if you watched the presentation from my colleague Mikolai before, you have seen how uh, he has done his great work with uh, VR with this approach. and. Um, I also worked uh, together with him on, on this little project. It's an office-wide solution for the reuse and distribution of 3D assets, materials, scripts, and, and plugins. It's still in development. Uh, he has shown some more details how it works, and but the idea is to, um, by a simple search, you can find uh, 3D assets we have in the office. We made our own, we other colleagues prepared already, and you can just drag and drop them into your Rhino view and make use of it. It avoids of obviously mistakes like um, not working uh, texture paths or duplicate geometry instead of block usage. And um, if there is any problem, you can ask uh, via the integrated chat that we run in the office of all the colleagues uh, using Rhino. And uh, this uh, interface should bring more ease and fun in creating virtualizations. And as an architecture often necessary, 
um, create a new option filled with life very quickly. And uh, so users can concentrate on, on what they have really to do, to, and namely to re prepare a presentation, not to hassle around for finding objects. Mm, yeah. When it comes to internal communication, uh, the uh, before shown chat, uh, we customized an open source chat software called uh, Rocket Chat, and it helps in reducing the annoying and nowadays outdated email traffic in the office and facilitates the communication among the more than 400 employees now and integrates uh, with custom not notifications uh, for tasks, custom bots, and to monitor, for example, Rhino and Revit model performance. Uh, for monitoring the performance of our uh, workstations and heavy Revit files, for example, we make uh, use of the open source IoT technologies. Uh, we customize the software um, stack to investigate any performance issues in order to provide a more in-depth analysis on, on this thing to our IT department so they can solve the issue then. Uh, within the increasing use of our 3D printers in the office uh, for design mockups, um, running almost 24 hours. Um, a need of monitoring also these devices in an easy and comprehensive way seemed uh, necessary. So by using the Ultimaker, Ultimaker API and uh, partly modifying the embedded Linux on the printers, um, this in-house developed tool allows to view the live camera, to pro the progress and all the sensor data, as well as upload files, start and stop the prints remotely from just one view. And um, in order to provide all of these uh, tools uh, shown in a trouble-free and, and pleasant uh, way, the necessary infrastructure had to be created before. And it was done in a close cooperation, of course, with the IT department to help us this. And, and a very essential, very central role now is uh, our um, Git repository, uh, locally stored at our server in-house. It's not publicly available. Um, which stores all the scripts, all the plugins, so namely also all the um, project-specific solutions for PyRevit scripts and so on is all centrally um, located at this um, Git repository, so we have a proper versioning, we have proper control over um, what is around already, what can be reused, so it Im immensely improves uh, code quality, even though code <coughs> is not a big thing in the office, but it um, really helps to, to summarize this. Um, yeah, so it also um, helps to improve the, the software we had already. So we have um, a software for CNC laser made in-house to make it more accessible for all the architects because technically everybody can access these machines and everybody should be able to use the machine for his design explorations and so on. And so you see the, the working method um, in the architecture project teams is strongly oriented uh, to physical models and H, uh, Herzog Demero is known for having a specific no specific design style. This means every project is a new challenge. And uh, you will find designs from the master plan uh, to the smallest detail. So this is our project archive, where you can see all the projects from really the first project to the, to the latest one and most important design phases shown as a model. And this diversity is not only reflected in, in the shown archive, but uh, also in dealing with our available tools. So we have a new 5-axis CNC, and this offered some new possibilities in the design process, which, however, could not be fully exploited um, after a few adjustments, of course. And um, uh, together with our in-house CNC expert, Dominic Nussen, I built a new interface for the 5-axis machine panel for the screen, uh, which facilitates now the control of all necessary functions within one screen that we created. And you would not imagine how complicated it was before. It was like over-engineered, I think, by Siemens. And uh, we also developed a complete solution for programming and simulating a 5-axis machine movement. 
uh, for a bit better design workflow. It detects possible collisions by calculating, again, a full IK, uh, gives feedback about available tools, and makes programming the CNC much more easy for our carpenters. So the advantage of using a parametric environment like uh, Grasshopper makes it also more easy for us developers to quickly modify and update milling uh, strategies according to our coworkers' need on a specific project. Um, this interface brings our employees back to work and, and lets them even forget about the labors of our old CAM software they used before. And uh, the physical model is an extremely important design tool for the office. So the quality of the result is in the focus of the handling of the software is only a means of the pur for the purpose. So I think um, um, the fact that the user and his ideas are in the foreground um, does not seem to have arrived to all big software vendors yet. Uh, probably they don't know about these seven principles yet. And uh, I, I would like to, to finish off this, um, this talk with the famous quote by, by Cedric Price. Um, Technology is the answer, but what was the question? Uh, I think this, this should be the, the first question you have to pull yourself when you start developing a software, namely to focus on the problem, not to, to provide solutions. Yeah. But I think um, we have some uh, great examples here at the conference already. I've seen them around, and I'm really happy to, to see this growing faster. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Florian while he's here? Yes, we have one from Tao. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm, just, I'm curious, and, and you're a kind of design flow. Um, do they come with a challenge saying we have to fabricate this, or do you just sometimes come and say, look, we found a new fabrication method, here it is, and then they kind of embed that at some later stage in a different design? So you mean the, the, the co-workers working with the CNC, or specifically? Yeah, like, like Okay. Some kind of technology or CNC milling style. Would that be done for a specific project, or would they just play around with it, put it online, and say, "Hey, what would we make? We want to put that in the project." Um, I would say both. Like um, sometimes, if they don't know the the solutions exist already, they will come and say, "Hey, I want to have this." And most of the time, there is already a tool we developed for this or something similar. So we make use of this, adapt it, and give it to them. At the same time, we will then try to make this existing tool more generic in order to not have to re recreate this all the time. Um, sometimes the solutions are very specific to the project, then of course we have to create a new, new solution for this. Yeah. You make it. Okay. Any, more, any more questions? No? Okay, we'll take a couple of minutes just to swap laptops over and then we'll move on to the next presentation. Thank you very much.